Welcome to my class on Buddhist meditation and Buddhist philosophy and Buddhist cosmology. Let's start off with uh, a little Buddhist history. Let me see. Uh, Buddha, the historical Buddha, is named Shakyamuni Buddha. S H A K Y A M U N I. Or sometimes instead of S H, it's just S without the H. But it's pronounced Shakyamuni Buddha. Uh, he was born in 563 years before the Common Era in India. He became enlightened. Enlightened means complete and permanent happiness. Amazing, isn't it? <clears throat> or Buddhahood. The word Buddha isn't his real, his original name. Buddha just means awakened. And Buddhahood is complete and perfect enlightenment. And it's beyond just plain liberation, plain nirvana. I think mm, liberation, yeah, you do it for your own sake. But Buddhahood, you do it for the sake of others and you go through what's known as training for Buddhahood or where you are a bodhisattva. Bodhisattva is a being that is in the process of becoming a Buddha and is motivated by bodhicitta. Bodhicitta. Chitta means mind, and bodhi is a ma is a, is enlightenment. Um, so bodhicitta is a mind of enlightenment, or having the attitude or spirit of enlightenment. Enlightenment. In other words doing every action for the benefit of others and for you for the benefit of yourself actually the paradox is that to attain the highest possible happiness you want to forget about yourself <laughs> so that's the the paradox how to to attain that perfect happiness for yourself by forgetting about yourself and that's what the Dalai Lama calls wise selfishness in other words you do want to be selfish about it and, and go ahead and do the best you can to towards being as happy as you can but you want to do that with a motivation of okay I'm going to do this for the benefit of others and that way whatever action you perform you're making sure that this will not hurt others so uh, okay what did I say about Buddha Shakyamuni Buddha he's born in 563 years before the common era in India he was enlightened about when he was 35 years old and when he became enlightened uh, the gods uh, Indra and some other god um, asked him hey uh, why don't you uh, take some time and start teaching others about how they could become enlightened like you are and the Buddha said okay I'll do that so he spent the next 45 years teaching and he gave 84,000 different teachings and they eventually recorded it in uh, sutras like the for the Theravada Buddhists the Pali Canon uh, and there's versions uh, for the Tibetans the Tibetan Buddhists uh, in their sutras they're pretty similar to the Pali Canons and Everything's pretty much the same. 
but in addition the Tibetans have uh, uh, scriptures called tantras and that involves uh, tantric uh, Buddhism Tan there's also tantric Hinduism but there's a little, little difference and but uh, so you, you find uh, Tantrayana in in uh, or uh, coming out of Tibet and uh, it's also called Vajrayana but um, Tibetan Buddhism is is also considered a, a Mahayana Buddhism and that's uh, also um, considered the northern schools of Buddhism are considered Mahayana and the southern schools are considered Theravada but within Mahayana it, it considers um, the teachings uh, of the sutras or original teachings uh, they're they're considered Hinayana so the Mahayana says that that we have to have a strong foundation with Hinayana sutras or teachings like basic Buddhist teachings and then Mahayana uh, uh, emphasizes uh, Bodhicitta and uh, in, in becoming a, a Buddha that it's possible for everyone to become a Buddha that all sentient beings can become a Buddha and sentient beings are any or include animals and sentient beings have minds so animals have minds and minds are consciousnesses and uh, minds uh, aren't born and then die it's the bodies that are born and die and in the body is the brain and it's just a computer but the mind is something that inhabits a body from conception and leaves it in death to inhabit another body and between lives it's in the bardo or in the afterlife so so the main thing that's studied in uh, in buddhism is the mind but not just the mind in general so much as one's own mind to see how it functions and how we can steer it how we can control it train it and guide it in the in actions that that cause the greatest happiness for ourselves and others so the sentient being is a being whose mind is ignorant whereas a Buddha is a being who was once a sentient being but became enlightened by totally purifying his or her mind of ignorance and fully imbuing it with the qualities of compassion and wisdom so how do you do that through Buddhist meditation how can Buddhist meditation get us to enlightenment well Buddhist meditation teaches us to cleanse our minds 